Hey guys, welcome back. We are in week two of Take the Lead. This whole time, for this whole series, we're going out of the book of Judges. And this week, we're looking at Judges chapter seven. Last week, we talked about Ruth, who was a prophet and a judge. And this week, we're talking about Gideon, who was a very reluctant judge. But before we get into that, I have a video from you from Cool Carl over at Grow TV. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Andy. Welcome to Grow TV. <laughs> Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. What is up, Andy? How's it going? What it do? Hey there. What's up? All right, no more. Mother! Ah! <laughs> we have fun. We sure do. You seem like you're in a really good mood, Carl. Well, it's because I am. Well, why is that? Well, after last week's big idea of everyone could be a leader, well, it got me excited. That's great, Carl. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I'm a leader. I can accomplish so much. That's so good for you, man. What? What was that? Well, I mean, I think it's great that you're confident, but... Uh, but what? Well, leading takes a lot of responsibility. I'm always scared to lead. I'm scared to lead? Why? I mean, what if I fail? <laughs> fail? <laughs> what are you talking about, fail? Well, you know how you could succeed at leading, right? Um, yeah, if you're good at something, you succeed. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, just like you can succeed, you can also fail. Excuse me? Wait, you mean you, you didn't know that? What? <laughs> of course I knew that. I mean, like, you, when you succeed, this is like, when you fail, you know, it's uh, the conundrum of this sentence is what? What? Carl, you're not making any sense. That's because I'm failing, Andy. But. No buts. This is it. Every hope, goal, and dream I had, it's vanished into thin air. Whoa, Carl, that is not. No more leading for me. Let's take a moment to thank all the leaders that I wanted to be like. Hey, Jada. Hey, Andy. How's it going, Carl? Oh, not bad. You excited about being a leader? Carl's not having the best day. Oh, how come? I'm just a little bummed is all. Why's that? Well, I was so excited about being a leader, but then Andy destroyed my whole universe. Okay, not really. I was just reminding Carl that sometimes when you're leading, you may not always succeed. You may fail or mess up. And now he just reminded me twice. Why are you trying to destroy my whole universe, Andy? I'm glad you're not being dramatic about this. I'm not dramatic! <laughs> okay, I'm a little dramatic. Now, Carl, you gotta understand, leading can be scary, but it's so much easier when you have God on your side. Just like Gideon. Exactly. Gideon, what? Gideon, he was a normal guy in the Old Testament. Yup, and one day while he was working, an angel came to him and told him that the Lord was with him. But weren't the Israelites, God's people, kind of in a, just like a bad spot right then? They were. The people of God were not listening to God, but God still loved them. Oh. That angel also called Gideon a mighty warrior. Hold up. I thought you just said he was a normal dude, not some mighty warrior. Those things are completely different. Well, Gideon was surprised by hearing that too, but he was told by the angel that he would be the one to defeat the Midianites, the people who have been treating the Israelites so poorly. <laughs> wow, that's huge. It was, but Gideon started out his mighty warrior status by leading the charge to destroy the idols that his own people had put up. <laughs> Whoa, that was bold. Carl, do you even know what an idol is? Yeah, it's anything that takes place of God. I mean, God talked about it in the Ten Commandments. Respect. Yeah, I know things. That was impressive, Carl. Then Gideon was told he would have to go to battle, even though his community was weak and he was the smallest in his family. Talk about being afraid to fail. That's a lot of pressure. You bet it is. And Gideon was so nervous that he asked for a sign from God. Like a stop sign? Not really. What Gideon was going to do is he was going to take a piece of wool from a lamp, go outside and lay it down. And in the morning, if that wool was wet and the ground was dry, he knew that God would keep his promise and be with him and help him defeat the Midianites. How would a wet piece of wool help? 
It wouldn't, but that was Gideon's way of making absolute sure that it was God who was calling him. Still weird, but proceed. God gave Gideon the signs he asked for, but when Gideon gathered people to join his army, God told Gideon that there were too many people in his army. So Gideon said anyone who was afraid to fight can go home. And do you know how many people went home? 500. 22. 22. Ha! Thousand. 22,000 soldiers. What? What? And even though there were only 10,000 soldiers left, God said it was still too much. So Gideon listened to God and at the end of it, there were only 300 soldiers left. Are you kidding me? Why would God take away Gideon's armies? Well, Gideon was told he would defeat the Midianites and God wanted to make sure that everyone would know that if it wasn't for God, then they would have failed. Holy moly, that's incredible. So they won? They sure did, all because Gideon trusted God and God gave him courage to lead. Well, that's great. So I guess I shouldn't be worried about failing. Right? Everyone fails, but it takes real courage and bravery to lead. It takes courage to trust too. And leading with God on your side is so much better than anything else. <laughs> I believe that. What an awesome reminder. God gives me courage <laughs> to lead. Hey, Carl, that's our big idea. Heck, what? No, you're silly, Jada. Andy. Apparently, today's big idea is God gives me courage to lead. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. God, God gives, gives me, me courage, courage to lead. To lead. <laughs> Way to go. He gives me the courage and you the courage. And Andy, apparently, who would have thunk? Hey, I got a question, Andy. What are you afraid of? Nothing. Really? Not even this? What is it? Nothing. Ah! <laughs> gotcha. See you next week, kids. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. Before we get into it, do you have any fears? Of course you do. Everybody has fears. Everyone is afraid of something. What is your biggest fear? Is it like something real or like tangible, like a snake? or a spider, or is it something that you can't hold in your hand, like you're afraid of being alone, or you're afraid of failing? A lot of people are afraid of a lot of things. And sometimes they're real, sometimes, like they're, they're things you can hold or touch, and sometimes they're not as real, like they're real feelings, but they're not things that you can hold or touch, they're things that you can only think about. A lot of people are afraid of speaking in public. A lot of people are afraid of clowns. A lot of people are afraid of the dark or heights. A lot of people are afraid of dying. A lot of people are afraid of spiders and snakes and bugs. There's a lot of things to be afraid of. But you know, leading is pretty scary too. Yeah, I mean, think about it. It's like there's a spotlight right on you. Like blocking everything else out. And it's only you. And you have all this crushing responsibility on your shoulders. You must do the right thing. Because if you don't, the next person behind you, the person who's leading, that you're leading, the person that you're following, will also do the wrong thing. And it's, it's a lot. That's a real fear. I get it. Sometimes I'm afraid of making the wrong decisions because of how it will lead you guys. Or volunteers, or other families. And... You, when you're a leader, it affects other people. It's a lot of responsibility. And the scary thing is, is that everyone can be a leader. Everyone is a leader. That's what we talked about last week. So, if everyone can be a leader, if everyone is a leader in some sense, and you can fail at being a leader, that must mean that a lot of leaders fail all the time. And that's true. And it affects a lot of people. In fact, if you want to look at a failing leader, just look at a politician. Any of them. Literally any politician. Because they've failed hugely in at least one respect or another. Whether it's the governor, the mayor, the president, um, the senator, the congressman or woman. You get my point. People fail all the time. That's kind of written in our genes. 
and our DNA is we will make mistakes. The thing that makes leadership so scary when it comes to failure is that leading requires people to follow you. That's what makes a leader. If you are leading somebody on a destination, on a hike, you're leading somebody all the way to the cliff and you look behind you and nobody's with you, well, that's not leading. It's just a hike. Leading requires there to be people to follow you, which means that as a leader, if you make a mistake, if you mess up, if you fail, you might be bringing people with you. It says in the Bible that if the blind leads a blind, both men will fall into a pit. If you are leading when you do not have the capacity to lead, if you shouldn't be leading, if you're doing something wrong in leadership, the person behind you is likely to fall into those same mistakes. And that's really scary because that's a lot of responsibility. Not only do you have to know what you're doing, you have to do it so well that the people behind you can imitate that and to do it just as well as you are. If we want the people around us to make good decisions, we have to make good decisions. And man, I just don't got that kind of time or energy. Jeez. <sighs> that's a lot of responsibility. And that's what Gideon felt. Except worse, because it meant that if he was wrong, he and a bunch of other people would die. Because Gideon was leading an army. Gideon was leading an army of God's people. Gideon was trying to free God's people and overthrow another army. That is a huge responsibility. And that was one that he wasn't sure he could do. And let's be honest, I don't know if I'd be sure I could do it either. And I'm sure you wouldn't either. That is that is a huge thing to take on by yourself. But he had to do it. There was no other option. So he tested God. Now, don't test God. You know, take God at his word. <laughs> Listen to him. Do what he says. But. You should always test what you believe to be God against God's word, against the Bible, against the counsel of people that are wiser than you, people who also have a good relationship with God. You should also always test with them to make sure that it actually is God. But if you know that it is God that is speaking, don't test him. Don't push him. Don't be like, no, nah, I don't believe so. Mm -mm. I don't think that's right. Mm. Mm -mm. Not me, God. Mm -mm. Not me. Because other people in the Bible that have done that very thing, it didn't go very well for them. Ask Jonah what happened when he said no to God. Right? Come on. <laughs> we don't want to test God. However, that's what Gideon did. He said, uh, I don't know. It's a pretty formidable army over there. I don't want to die. I don't want all these people to die. So, uh, you know, prove it. Prove that you are God and prove that this is what I should do. <laughs> and so, you know, he put out some wool and he said, God, if the wool gets wet and nothing else around the area gets wet, I will know that that is something that you did and I will believe you. And so God did it. And then he put it out and he said, he said, Pfft, Let's do that again, God. But this time, if you get everything wet but the wool, I'll believe that it's you. And so then God did it. And then he was like, all right, well, you know what? I guess I have to do this. I guess I have to lead the, lead the armies. And I mean, we, we heard the story from Carl and Jada and... Gosh, why am I so bad with names? Andy. We learned the story from those three. And we learned that God then tested Gideon further by removing people from the army. Like, only giving him, like, 300 people from the army. Whereas before, he had about, like, 32,000 people. 
That's insane. Can you imagine going to war against thousands and thousands of people with like your neighbors and that's it? Like the people that live on your street and like maybe a couple streets over and that's it? Because 300 people sounds like a lot, but that's not a lot of people. Certainly not enough versus thousands of trained soldiers. So, I guess this is really cool that God did that, though. Because it kind of showed that that was what God was capable of doing. You see, the point here in this story is not that God freed these people from their oppressors. It's not that God conquered that army. I mean, that's a cool story, but that's not the point. The point is to trust in God, to have faith in God, to do what he says, and only believe in God. If you remember from last week, the point of judges was always to put somebody in charge who would turn the people of Israel back to God. In Judges chapter 4 with Ruth, not Ruth, uh, Deborah. In Judges chapter 4 with Deborah, God had to use Deborah to bring the people back to God, to have faith in God. Three chapters later, those same people are all worshiping idols. They're building statues. They're uh, worshiping like this guy called Baal. We can get into him another time. It's, it's a mess. So I think that not only God was going to help his people, but I think God also was like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you worshiping these false gods? What the heck? So it was really important for Gideon to have this, such a, like a strong faith in God because he was the appointed judge at that time. And what God needed to do in him was to turn the people of Israel to believe in God again. And Gideon failed at first. Because Gideon was kind of a coward. Gideon didn't want to do the job that God had asked. Gideon didn't want to believe. And that's okay. We've all been there. But the great thing is that God, even though Gideon made mistakes, God overcame it. He did something amazing and miraculous. And he defeated those armies. He proved to Gideon who he was and why Gideon should believe in him. And that same courage that he forced into Gideon allowed Gideon to then lead the people back to God. So, you don't have to be so scared to lead. Because one, you're already leading. We covered this last week. If you breathe, if you live, you're a leader in some sense of the word. There are people that follow you, whether you know it or not. People know who you are, they like you, and they follow you. The important thing is, is are you using that skill well? Are you successful? Are you unsuccessful? And if you are unsuccessful, that's okay. But let's turn it to a success. Let's give it to God. Let's be empowered by Him and His Holy Spirit. And let's show people who God really is. Let's be successful leaders. I'm going to pray. Father God, thank you so much for everything you do for us. Thank you, God, that even though we make mistakes, even though we mess up, You constantly cover us and protect us and lead us. You are the best leader. So God, we put our trust and our faith in you like Gideon did. God, that you are going to fill us with courage to do what is right and to lead others the way that you would expect us to. God, we want to know you more and we want to reflect you and we want to show people who you are. So God, would you please just help us to be better leaders. And would you give us the courage to try and be better leaders? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
So guys, before I sign off, quick, quick announcements. First off, Kids Worship Night, June 25th. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be awesome. Kindergarten through sixth grade. If you are in sixth, seventh, eighth, or older, you can volunteer, you can help out, you can serve food, you can play games, you can come and just be with your little siblings, whatever. But it's going to be awesome. It's from 6 to 7.30. It's in the sanctuary, which means we're not going to be in this room. We're going to be in the really big room. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. So June 25th, 6 to 7.30. Doors open at 5.45. And if you pre-register, which you should, either in the foyer on your way out of the church or online at the link on Facebook and Instagram or to the email that was sent to your parents, I'm giving too many details. If you pre-register, you'll be entered to win either a $100 gift card to Dave & Buster's or, nope, not or, and, and a giant plush sloth of our mascot, Moxie the Sloth. So, that is $100 to get to Dave & Buster's, which is a good night for about five people, or a really good night for like one person, your choice, and a giant sloth, which is pretty cool. So you should pre-register. And you get to worship Jesus. And that's pretty cool too. So, June 25th, don't miss it. Second announcement. Summer is pretty much here. If you go to McKeel, the Christian school in the area, you're already out of school by the time you've watched this video. If you're not, I'm sorry and I feel your pain. I also went to public school and you have about like two weeks left. You can do it. I believe in you. Anyway, summer is approaching fast. So this summer, we've got some awesome things going on. Almost every Thursday of the, of the summer, for like July and August, we're gonna be having events here at the church and they're gonna be awesome. We're gonna do paint wars, we're gonna do slime, we're gonna do movie days, we're gonna do maybe a field trip, who knows? <gasps> and Nerf Wars, did I say Nerf Wars? I don't know. Either way, we're gonna have a ton of fun and you guys should be there. It's open from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade, from eight to 12 on Thursdays in the summer, the link information will come out later next week. You should watch out for that. Also, a VBS is coming your way, so watch out for information on that too. I've given you a lot of details, so you know what? Process that however you can. Anyways, be safe out there. I love you guys. Do not be afraid to lead. You got this. I believe in every single one of you. So do good out there and be safe. I'll see you next week.